Hello everyone, as usual, I say I'm so happy that you found me, and I'm so happy I found you. Today, what's pressing on my mind is, of course, the death of uh, our favorite judge, Ruth, who now is scrambling, people are scrambling to replace. She was a vote for women on women's issues, and now we have lost that, and um, hopefully... We can get another woman on the Supreme Court or someone who cares about women's issues. But I'm telling you, as an individual, you have to care about your own health, your own well-being, and quit leaving it to other people, okay? So I wrote a long, long time ago. And for me, a long, long time ago, it was probably about 10 years, about Viagra. And the blog that I wrote about Viagra, I had a comment from a male that I was a nasty, dirty woman. And I found it so funny because what I said was, we're so invested in the female reproductive system that we do whatever it takes that they don't have contraceptives, that they cannot be in charge of when they want to reproduce or not to reproduce by the was rape, they still have to go through hoops not to have the baby. I'm not advocating abortion, but what I'm saying, a woman has no rights to her body. People then apply the Bible on top of her and say it's uh, murder, according to the Bible, if you do terminate a pregnancy. But I said, what about Viagra? Why? Are you insuring and have no problem with Viagra, which is for the male organ, to be reinstituted back to have pleasure? And by that, they may spill the seed, may use a condom, whatever, but they are interrupting uh, procreation. They are interrupting God's natural call. Uh, uh, natural flow of things because if you would lived a life and no longer can produce kids, that's it. They said women, they even said women can have artificial insemination. So why are men able to artificially continue the sex act with no point in trying to conceive a child? It's purely for recreation. And no one has any, and, and, and we know that Men don't keep one partner. There's no fidelity. I'm not saying all men, but we know men have a tendency to roam. And as long as he can keep that erection, he's going to find somewhere to put it. So somebody called me nasty for saying, all right, it's the natural stop in pro progress done by nature. Now, if you have other health conditions, of course you get that done. And hopefully then you can have an erection again. But just like menopause and women, it's time to stop. Not being able to have an erection, it's time to stop. Women taking contraceptives to try not to conceive. Men doing a crazy withdrawal uh, practice or condoms trying not to conceive. Why can they interfere with conception and women can't all right you want to jump back to fetus 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 i understand that but what i'm saying is the step even before then you messing with no contraceptives so there will be a fetus and then you're going to mandate that you must carry this child and pro-life is for life as long as it's in the womb but it's not pro-life pro once it's outside the womb. Because you can't cut off all kind of government uh, programs. The woman is like, I don't want to have this baby because I can't care for it. So you say, go ahead and have the baby. You must have the baby. Now it's her and the baby. And she said, I can't care for it. And they're like, you ladies, get a job. So. People are pro conception and pregnancy, pro pregnancy and anti life. Okay, so I want to just bring that up because I think it's such an imbalance. And women, you're sitting there thinking about, oh, it's birth control, it's no big deal. They take abortion off of, of the books as a legal practice, 
it's no big deal. I don't want an abortion. Don't nobody in my family want an abortion. But the bottom line isn't just abortion. It's telling a woman what you must do with your body. You must do this with your body. No one gets to tell you you must. I can't walk up to a man and tell him you must be strong and lift 100, 200 pounds or else we have to take away stuff from you. That's what you were made to do to be strong. Why are you not around here being strong? Who is policing a uh, man? And then you're saying that's the job of, of women is to have children. Now, it's the job of a male and female to be united first before intercourse and have sex. You're leaving all the prerequisite alone. I do not hear you out there telling men to stop making babies so women won't abort them. There's no responsibility being placed on the male, and that's his seed. That is his seed out into the world. And uh, I think it says if a man don't take care of his own child, he's a, oh, I forget, infidel. Please look it up. If a man don't take care of his children, he is an infidel. If a man don't take care of his children, he is an infidel. A man who don't take care of his children is an infidel. Hope that is clear. Look it up. I don't have to make one thing up. I'm not here to make up whatever just for some likes or whatever and be known as the YouTube liar. Nope, that's not what I'm out. So now I'm just going to look at a few things, not many. I always say a few and run long. But if you like what you're hearing, remember to subscribe, like, comment, share. It's also a wonderful thing. Pin me sometime. I get a lot of my material from my book, When Will Eve Be Forgiven, that looks at women's issues as it relates to how we portray and how we are dictated we're supposed to live as Christian women. And now will be taken from this chapter. What chapter number is it? I'm taking my information from chapter 9, entitled Nine Months and Counting. Huh, Nine Months and Counting. Chapter 9. So we're going to look first at um, Genesis verse uh, chapter 1, verse 28. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Okay? We know we can might as well stop right here. There's no point going on. People been married for 50 years and have two children. Some kind of uh, contraceptive was used. Male, female, you withdrawal method is contraceptive too. For you to have only two children in, in that amount of time, you have not followed the, com the command, increase in number. You did not increase in number. We go into the churches, a lot of the Catholic churches. You don't see 8 and 10, 12 kids there. They may have one, they may have two. They did not increase. They were not fruitful. They did not increase. And this is the first book in the Bible that people wave around for other people. Christians wave this around for other people and tell them, you must have children. You must have children. You must have children. But somehow, these people are sitting there with two children. Now, the Duggars got 14 and counting, and people look at them like, oh, my God, that's insane. But that is the norm. That's supposed to be every household. The Duggar House School, how come you don't have 14 and counting? You didn't increase in number. You didn't feel the earth. You had one or two kids at your discretion in your control as you saw fit and what reason. And someone said, well, people have common sense and they don't have children that they aren't able to support. That is not what the vice verse said. It said, be fruitful and multiply only the amount of number you can take care of and fill the earth and subdue. No, there's no stipulation. So if you're saying people must have children, you need to point your finger at yourself. Also, you must have children. I have three. Of course, I prevented more pregnancies. That's what I did, but that wasn't a command, was it? First Gen Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. God blessed them, man and woman, and said, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. That is plain and to the point. You have enough of business in your own house before you go out and mess with other people's wounds. You have enough to do in your own home, in your own church, in your own community, in your own uh, 
city and state before you reach the entire United States. You have a lot to do. You have your own business to get done, right? Okay. Next, I look at Psalm 127, verses 3 through 5. Psalm 127, verse 3 through 5. Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward from him. Like arrows in his hands, in the hands of a warrior, are sons born in one's youth. Did you hear that? Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. So he said, uh, many arrows is your children, and the quiver is the container you strapped on and you had your... Uh, arrows in there and said blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them arrows which means children they will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate so that right there you're having all them children you're for the tribe a clan of connecting this together to care for each other protecting each other so when someone comes to attack your area you you can put up a good fight because it's many of you People running around here scared all the time. I must have a gun on me. I must have just, because it's only two or three. They can be overran at any time, anywhere. But I'm in Mississippi, and there are some families that are family strong, 40 deep. At any time, they can pull up 40 people ready to go. And those families have lots of children, nine children, uh, six children over here, nine. And they just a big-ass horde. Don't nobody mess with them. They aren't mean or they're not intimidating people or bullying people. But, you know, good and well, if you mess with them, you got to contend with 40 of them. And that's in the South, okay? And are they in poverty? Pretty much. Pretty much so. Not in poverty so much as they could not do anything, but poverty of the whole state. Mississippi is a poverty state. It has cities and counties that are poverty stricken. If you do get an education and move upward, you ha usually have to move to another area. This state does not want um, upward mobility for everyone economically. It is just really kept down. So, but the family will not be ashamed when the enemy is at their gate. So. That's in Psalms. We keep seeing that you're supposed to have children, 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 children. Children, there's a mandate. First Timothy 2, uh, verses 9 to 15. I want to bring this up, okay? And I'm going to tie it in with what's going on. First Timothy, second chapter, verse 9 to 15. Paul states that through childbearing, if they continue through faith, love, and holiness with propriety, the woman can be saved. They never save enough from the original sin and people said okay if she have children which she bring forth in pain then she is saved and it didn't mean spiritually saved it means uh she makes it through she is saved child bearing the the cramps of that destiny race of i know uh in my gender there's a hanging cloud of wrongdoing but that sin God gave the punishment of pain through childbearing. And when we go through that process, we know that we've been forgiven because God could have killed us, Adam and Eve, in the beginning and started all over from scratch, but he didn't. He said, I'm going to inflict the punishment on you. And this punishment you're going to carry. And then when the woman, it ain't saying women that don't have children aren't forgiven because we're all under a big blanket of what sin is and we know what that is. But I do believe, and I cannot prove this, but I did break it down. I did break it down. Um, what was meant by she would be saved in the book. And I don't have enough time and enough videos I want to upload about that. But it is um, told that he didn't mean that saved was if she have children, then she is a Christian, right? But so you'll have to look in, in my book, um, Chapter 9 on 9 months and counting for me to look for us to go on into what does God mean that if she has children and continue on and being holy and stuff, she can be saved. But I want to bring that in about childbearing. Childbearing is important. Childbearing was set up from the beginning to have tons of them. Childbearing continued even when we were um, 
had to receive a curse from God, childbearing was still important, okay? Now, the, chap the Catholic Church has spoken out against the use of any means to prevent having children within a marriage. And that's why I said, if you go through childbirth, you'll be saved. It was intended for us to be fruitful and multiply. There's no doubt about that. And First Timothy is trying to tell women the importance of having children. It ties back to... Um, your spirit, your soul, of being saved, of being part of the family, of being whole, as being a woman, that you don't carry with you the stigma. Your punishment is your punishment, and it's served out. A man is still serving out here. But Timothy did say, if you toil all day and work and labor, you will be saved, okay? But at this point, there was something going on that had to be spoken about, and he's talked about that, but there's a bigger context. So the Catholic Church, which we broke off from, Protestants broke off from the Catholicism, but we all practice uh, Catholicism at one time or first. The Catholic ch Church has spoken out against the use of any means to prevent having children within a marriage. Within a marriage. Within a marriage. In Genesis 23, 8, verse 8 through 10, it says, Brother sleeping with the dead brother's wife to conceive a son, to carry on the bloodline of the deceased brother. This law is found in Deuteronomy 25, uh, verse 5 through 10. It's the, the Leverite law. And I've said it before. And like I said, if we want to keep going back to Genesis, every time something come up, we go to the Old Testament and try to put it on people. But we pick what we want to say. We pick what we want people to hear. We pick what we want to beat people with. We pick what we say is our cause. And I'm telling you, if you cherry pick in the Old Testament, you're in the wrong. Because we are living in the New Testament now. And if you want to stay in the law, there are 20,000 laws you have to upkeep. You don't get to put five out the Old Testament and say, let's use these here and forget everything else. No, you're either going to do the Old Testament and do it right. What God said, you'd be hot or cold, but lukewarm, he cannot stand, he spit you out. So you can't be lukewarm dancing in there a little bit. Either you're 100 for it or you against it. It's good to look at and let you know what happened before Jesus came, how people were living before Jesus came. And you can appreciate so much more the sacrifice, the final sacrifice Jesus made for us so we could be forgiven by grace. But as long as you back there keep cherry picking that uh, Old Testament, trying to tell people what to do, you're wrong. You need to move into God and Jesus and you need to find you another foundation that lets you know what is your mission, what is your part is being a Christian. The Old Testament didn't have Christians. To be a Christian means you follow Jesus Christ. And that's what you're saying you're doing now. You say, I'm following Jesus Christ. I believe in him, his life, ministry, death, and resurrection, and I want to be Christ-like. There's no Christ in the Old Testament for you to be Christ-like. The Old Testament is for the Israelites, the Jewish. You aren't even Jewish. You're not even Jewish to follow that. Okay, the Jews do follow the first five still books of, of Old Testament. You don't. You go in there and pull raggedy things out and try to plow. You got to make your decision. 2020 is a good time for a new start, freshness, kick off old that you did not know. Once you know, do, do better. When you know better, do better. Quit running in there, stealing out pieces of the Old Testament for a New Test Testament Christian. Okay, so in Genesis 23, verse 8, the um, family was a big unit, and the home was blessed if it had sons. It was very important to have a son, because what land ownership went to the sons, not to the daughters. Daughters married out and became part of a, another clan's um, benefit. So the son stayed there for this family uh, uh, money. The sister went, and she's part of a family of inheritance over there. She can't inherit, but she's part of her husband's inheritance in the land and animals and whatever they bless with. So if a brother, brothers were important, women really kept going until they had a son. We don't do that anymore. We don't think having a son is special, but in the Bible is demonstrated in the Old Testament that it was very important. So the name of that family clan would not wear out. Right now, my husband 
has in the next generation just have one nephew, one nephew with the family name. And he's the only one that will be carrying it on. And bless him, he has a little boy right now. Uh, but it, it's, it's very funny. A family name can die out. It's not impossible whatsoever. Um, so he had to sleep with his wife until the brother, the brother of the deceased brother, had to take his wife, if they had no son, no children, no son, and have sex with her until she had a son. So she could be the family name of him, and they named the son after the deceased um, father and carry on his name so to be forever spoken in the world. That's what it said, so it can be forever spoken. So Onan, who was tasked with this responsibility to sleep with his brother's, his deceased brother's wife to have a child, he didn't, he went through with the act, but he would withdraw and spill his seed. And so not to get her pregnant because that would be adding more children over there. And they wouldn't be his. He didn't have really obligation to raise them or do anything like that. His 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 children now see would go in and create another line. And those children, son, his nephew and stuff, build land, receive land and stuff. And only one with it. So he would withdraw and spill his seed. And that was the first unreliable form of birth control, the withdrawal method, and men used it as not to procreate, which was told to God by God to fulfill, to fill the earth. And now we have men spilling their seed so they won't create children. So pro-life goes beyond the fetus in the woman's womb that you're demanding for her to have. You have to demand for men to not spill their seed, for men to mis not use their seed to impregnate a woman. And your quiver be full of children, and you keep having children until you have a son, so your name will not be forgotten on this earth. Bam. Bingo. Pro-life starts a long time before the fetus in the womb. Get it straight. People that dictate are dictating to you for an agenda they have because they're not paying any attention to anything that goes along with procreation and reproducing. You do not hear them saying she should not get rid of a fetus because we're supposed to have tons of children. You don't hear that saying that she's getting rid of one. We're not supposed to do it. We're supposed to have many as possible children and she just going to get in our Christian United States, right? Right, okay. It's not that. Okay, so that was the first one and, and God was very disappointed in him for doing that. He knew the law that was given and so there was a punishment also that went with that. So y'all need to look up Genesis 23, verse 8 through 10 and read through that and understand that, that God is watching even over us and our reproductive issues. He was looking over that. We don't have that obligation, even though we know that was an obligation. And I would like for you all to think about how many men would have that obligation um, to a brother's wife. I have no brother, so... I don't know, but in a family, you're supposed to continue having children. Absolutely. You don't even make a decision to continue. You do continue, and it is imperative to have a son. Deuteronomy 23, verse 1, mentions another form of birth control. It says, crushing or cutting parts of the male reproductive system. And the NIV say, wounding his stones shall not, in, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So if he's wounding his stone, which is testicle, um, crushing or cutting any part of that, then he is not allowed to enter into the congregation of the Lord. And we know that's a vasectomy. So the Bible tells you even about vasectomies, these men running around here, crushing or cutting their stones. It's not biblical, and it's a vasectomy. But what do we say? We're not living right there. In the Old Testament, because the Old Testament have a lot to say. Number seven for me, church fathers. And this is the church fathers. We had the apostles, the 12, but they went out, of course, and expanded around. And then we had uh, a lot of men that just became 
very good spokesman on uh, theology, what it means to serve God, what does it entail, man serving God. I mean, they studied, they pondered, they got together, they talked, they wrote tons of stuff, and we call him the church father. So church father Clement of Alexandria in 195 AD, um, Jesus died in 33 AD. So this was uh, 162 years this 162 years after Jesus walked the earth, and really that wasn't uh, that big of a time, but people would study right then also on the New Testament Christians and Christianity, and at this point, they had Catholicism, right? And so in, 19, in 195 AD, he stated, because of its divine institution for the propagation of man, the seed is not to be vainly ejaculated, nor is it to be damaged, nor to be wasted. So in 195 BC, AD, after Christ's death, 195 AD, we have church fathers telling men, you cannot be vainly ejaculating. Each ejaculation is meant to produce children and not to try to prevent children. That's what it's for. So you are not supposed to ejaculate vainly, knowing that uh, you withdraw a message or condom or anything like that. So men have a mandate way before fetus uh, by church uh, fathers telling them, just don't do it because of its divine institution for propagation. It said it is divinely instituted. It's a gift. It's a blessing. You heard say you will never fear your enemy at the gate. It's a blessing. The more children you have, the more it is. It's divinely ordained. It was a, 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 a the God said, don't eat of this tree was his command. And what was next? Be fruitful and multiply. It's very, very important to have children. And we um, don't share in that equally as man, men and women. We steadily always putting it on women and women saying, if I'm 100% responsible for procreation, then let me be 100% responsible in it. But no, I'm going to dip and dab. Now, I did all of that about having children, how important it was to have children. We know people are coming for you to have children, right? Don't destroy fetus and everything. So now let's look at what I said. The natural process is for women to have um, children, we have menstrual cycle that it's, when the egg is no longer it's no longer viable to be fertilized, the body sheds to prepare again for a new, um, hopefully fertilized egg. We have the man's sperm in the hundred trillion million um, trying to get to one egg, and they don't make it. it I don't know what's wrong with it, but they don't all of them don't make it, so you're not pregnant, right? And thus the process go on and on and on and on. We women get to a nat natural stopping point of menopause when our bodies say we have no um, good eggs left to be fertilized. Um, we're no longer um, releasing any. And so we don't need hormones that would be to sustain our uterus, to sustain a life um, because nothing else is going on. We're going to the beautiful state of menopause. All right. But we know men can continue to have children well up into the 80s and whatever the sperm do decreased in viability and vitality, you know, but they still can get that home run if so desired. But now we have erectile dysfunction, erectile dysfunction. So men don't get somewhere and sit down, right? They'll get this blue pill that says, okay, I got a strong erection. Let me go find a 20 year old. They don't even want the woman in menopause, which is their equal and they call her counterpart. No, they still trade chasing little women because woohoo, I got this Viagra. I I'm still good to go sexually. Okay. They don't think that it's a God ordained time just to stop. No. Having children, you're not being fruitful and multiplying, but you want to use your um male parts for lust. Sex here, there, and everywhere. Okay. Viagra treats erectile dysfunction, thus inevitably to have children the natural way. You're doing it in a chemical-induced way. 
artificial way if you do have children of an erection. And the pill can be prescribed for men 18 years and older. In 2019, uh, Pfizer, who makes the blue pill, Viagra, generated $500 million in revenue. $500 million in revenue. You don't know how many ejaculations that is, how many possibilities. In one year, you may get one woman. That's 500 million children. We're not having none of that. There's no baby boom since uh, Viagra. Of course, it isn't. It should have been a, a, a baby boom to have an erection. You can ejaculate. You can fertilize a egg. But there's no baby boom. So what's going on? What is happening to be fruitful and multiply? What is going on? Okay. Viagra has been around since 1998. And in its first quarter, they made $400 million in the first quarter in 1998. And later, it was $1.80 billion in sales. Okay, 1998. It was $1.80. Eight billion dollars in sales. It says one in ten men have erectile dysfunction in their early to mid sixties. So these sixty year olds, I meant fifties. What I got down? One in ten men have erectile dysfunction early as mid fifties. Okay. So why is this big purchase? Are you really trying to have children? Are you really being fruitful and multiplying? Are you really concentrated in having a quiver full of arrows so your name will, uh, uh, so you won't be shamed when the enemy comes? Are you having all these children, to, your sons, to give you the inheritance to make the family wider and bigger and more able to maintain um, your inheritance? I don't know what's going on. $1.8 in sales. And then we focus on the female and say, you get pregnant, you better have a baby. Just like she's scooting booting out here by herself, multiplying and having babies. And I don't want the baby. I don't want the baby. Where are these $1.8 billion in sales? What are they doing? Where's the children there? People are pro-pregnancy, but anti-life. People are pro-contraceptive. Anti-women's right to choose. Anti-life. That's not right. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 says, Sex designed only within marriage, sex outside of marriage, whether for pleasure or procreation, is wrong. Sex designed only within marriage, sex outside of marriage, whether for pleasure or procreation, is wrong. So that's the stance inside of marriage. The sex within marriage, and you two are together, and the Lord said in the beginning, be fruitful and multiply. So they say in people that are married, sex is for them, right? But it's also funny that uh, I know I can't even pinpoint, but women are supposed to be virgins, 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 virgins. And if we follow that, being virgins until we were married, more likely the uh, rate of abortions would go down when we married, have a home where the person working and caring is supporting instead of being a single female um, on your own. And so we have a lot of things before we even get to abortion that should be done. But it says nowhere in the Bible is sex prohibited for pleasure. So you notice the book of Songs of Solomon is almost pornographic. It's in its writing on relationships. And I know when I was little, about 11 or 12, and I stumbled on Songs of Solomon, my eyes got big. I could not believe stuff like that was in the Bible. But, you know, Deuteronomy kind of gives you a run for your money, too, with all their sex laws, what you do after having sex. And, oh, my gosh, it just was too much for me. So I had to go back at another time. But, yeah, Songs of Solomon, to me, is almost pornographic. But that's what we don't tell people. There is a lustful part to 
uh, relationships that should be there, that wonderful romance feeling that I give myself for you. I met you and I want you to be mine forever. And we feel that way about women and then fast forward about seven, or eight months. You can't stand her. I mean, <laughs> it's a work. Attraction is a great thing. Then you have to have commitment. You know, you have to be committed to give it a try before just three weeks later you're through with somebody. Okay, nowhere in the Bible is sex prohibited for pleasure. Song of Song is almost pornographic. It's writing on relationship. The Catholic Church decided sexual pleasure only was not appropriate. Every sexual encounter must be open to the possibility of pregnancy. So that's the Catholic Church. Every sexual encounter must be open to the possibility of pre pregnancy. And I know the Catholic Church um, denied um, Vice President Biden communication. They said he wasn't a real Catholic. But I know that in that Catholic Church, that church sees people with only one or two children for years and years and years. It, see, it sees that the pulpit's not growing with the youth. And communion isn't denied from them not being fruitful and multiplying. But for Vice President Biden, they decided, I'm going to deny you this because of that political plan. The priests should be ashamed of themselves for politi politicizing that when we know them people in your parish aren't having children like they're supposed to while you indulging in the right to birth. It said your own church say sex is sex. Church decided sex for pleasure only was not appropriate. So pleasure for pleasure is not appropriate. You don't have sex just for pleasure. Every sexual encounter must be open to the possibility of pregnancy. Okay, let's go with this. Birth control for women was available for purchase in the 1960s. The diaphragm came along in 1938, and by 1939, community-based and state-sponsored birth control clinics existed throughout the country, and they were called, these diaphragm were called wound veils. You got to go get you a wound veil, people. In earliest parts of birth control in 3000 B.C., before Christ, Crete and Egypt had condoms made from animal and fish bladders or intestines or linen sheaths. 1850 B.C. before Christ, Egypt develops a spermicide con combining crocodile dung and fermented dough. 1619 through 1870, black women would use African folk remedies to create medicines to resist coerced reproduction by white men. And when I saw coerced reproduction by white men, that is so nice and clean instead of saying rape. But I wish you would call it what it is and quit sweetening up our ugly history because that was it. They created medicines to resist rape reproduction by white men, okay? 1855 was the first rubber condom. Congress passed the act authorizing the post office to confiscate birth control sold through the mail. You couldn't even, I don't know how they knew it was contraceptive being sent in the mail because anybody can get a brown box and send it. So the post staff was able to confiscate anything, condoms, pills, diaphragms, whatever, that was birth control. In 1907, the United States gave government the right to sterilize unwilling and unwitting people. The laws in 30 states said the insane, feeble-minded, the dependent and the disease were incapable of regulating their own reproductive ability, usually targeting black women, Native American women, and poor women and girls. I'm going to say something about that in a minute. In 1968, the intrauterine device, IUD, was available. 1991 and 92, Norplant, a long-lasting reversible controversy, contraceptive that was implanted under the skin and the upper arm. It prevent, prevents pregnancy for five years. And also a shot that is taken every three months to protect um, from pregnancy. 
1993, the first female condom was made. I don't think they were very popular. In 1998 through 1999, Plan B was approved as emergency contraceptive used after intercourse to prevent pregnancy. Used after intercourse, directly after intercourse to prevent pregnancy. And then I wanted to look because it was always during the time I wrote this, there was such a fight. Why was Viagra just for sexual pleasure, nothing to do with anything else except for I want to have a good time, was covered by insurance, but birth control to prevent pregnancy in a woman who may be sick, you don't know what it is, can't have a baby, carry a baby full term, a woman, like we said, been molested or in an incestuous home and can't even escape, what have you, uh, cannot get contraceptive care, medication care for herself. But men are flopping around here, having erections left, right, and left, making babies still. And then pro-life say, men, you don't have to at all police your impregnation of women. Impregnate them and leave them. Viagra say, have a good time. Get it done, right? But we don't have it. So some health insurance cover Viagra, sexual dysfunction drug for men, but not contraceptives for women, leading critics to charge discrimination. So by 2010, at least 29 states passed laws mandating group health plans cover prescription contraceptives, drugs, and devices. <laughs> I read all of this and did all of this for you girls. You may not be concerned or it may not concern you about your reproductive rights. But as you saw, it was a slippery slope down to sterilizing. It, if someone can write legislature to take away your contraceptives, then they wrote legislation, don't even let it be sold in the mail. Then they wrote legislation that you must have a, a child. And then you saw it was legislation to sterilize Poor people, black people, Indian people, people that had mental disorders, they just said point blank, you ain't in care. It's a tons of people with mental health issues. So don't play dumb and holler. Yeah, mental people shouldn't have children. If you look at how much mental illness it is, you would there wouldn't even be a population. So there you go right there. It's much dysfunction in, in this world. Your mama probably batshit crazy. Couldn't take care of you when you was a baby. Just got you up to a certain age and you've been managing the best you can with her little assistance. But we have so many people with bipolar, schizophrenic disorder, um, so, 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 sad, social anxiety disorder. We run the gamut. We are pill-popping people for mental health issues. And there's no shame in it. But these people were being sterilized. When you treated bad and downtrodden and just living in a stigma of shame, I'm sure it was a lot of people very capable of having children in the family that were sterilized against their will. So do you see how far things were? And you said, oh, we civilized now. We are not civilized now if men. It would be different if men and women were agreeing on this subject. But it is solely men telling us what to do with our body. And I said, if they can take contraceptive from us, we should take Viagra from them. What is the what is the reason for it? It's not to procreate. It's not for me to have children. You stand with me and we raise a family. What do, Your time is done, Henry. Henry, your erections are gone. Live with it. Change your life. Oh, you said, but what about the 20-year-old? There are 20 old women cannot get pregnant. It's just their fate. Now, they get to do, they want to take artificial insemination away. Remember? There's no reason for an infertile person to have children. So Bob, that's 20, he don't need to have no children. People are sitting up making these decisions about your life. When they have their 1.2 children, and some of y'all only have daughters. You don't even have a son. I thought you was at least supposed to have a son. A son was so important to the carrying on of the family name. 
So people, when you know better, do better. Whether you're for abortion or not. That's not the point. I just read how much of your rights will be taken away. And we know in the 60s, when we had to fight for equal appoint, uh, uh, equal employment without discrimination and sexism, the one thing that allowed us to work in the public arena was birth control. Because we could control our fertility we were able to actually have careers to go work and be independent. And manhood, the masculine man, collapsed. They collapsed. And they were just waiting what make America great again. Make America great again is also women out in the workforce because we cannot control our uh, reproductive rights. But there is a way to control your reproductive rights. And I said this also. Women, if you want birth control rights, for them to lead the birth control, stop having sex with them. It's time. Stop having sex with somebody who will not give you any control over your body. Now, I hope you're sharing past that along. Stop having sex with men that are not for you in whatever, lifting you up and making you into a better person. And we are living, Ruth, uh, uh, what's her name, Ruth Boehner Ginsburg. It's almost a tongue twister. She was helping us now. We are so vulnerable. You know, the, the pro-lifers are dancing in the street. And if abortion is overthrown and contraceptive, we're going to have kids like in India in old ditches trying to drink water just without parents anymore. All right, that's all I'm going to say. Like I say always, get my book, When Will You Be Forgiven? Nine Months and Counting is a bigger, nothing, it's, it's, it's so much juice um, about that. The premise of it is what um, 1 Timothy 2 said, uh, Paul says through child bearing, if, if they continue through faith, love, and holiness with propriety, the woman can be saved. And that is people thought from written sin. So a woman and her husband, who were not Christians their entire life, but came to Christianity at a, a late age in their 50s, where she's no longer able to have children. She, when she heard the um, pastor preaching on this, she almost had a nervous breakdown. Because she felt like her and her husband decided consciously not to have any children. And she asked her pastor, since I decided um, purposefully not to have children, does that mean my soul cannot be saved? That I will not be saved because through childbearing is when I am a uh, woman can be saved. So she said, I didn't know no better. I would have had children if I knew about this. And she was just really in a state saying, could she be saved? And she didn't know the answer. And the answer the pastor gave her was shocking. So that's in my book, When Will E Be Forgiven? Uh, chapter 9, 9 Months and Counting. As always, I say subscribe, like, comment, give me some feedback. This went a little long. I didn't feel like dividing it too. So you can hang with me a little longer. You can do that. Stick around and see what's going on. All right. I just hope everyone is praying for our country, praying for unity. It is so racialized now, um, polarized. I am quite fearful of civil war. It would not... Um, surprise me whatsoever. It's almost like we're being baited for such. And I hope that the Christian will rise up, not against, but above. You're above this. You're above. You know what civil war is like, the carnage it, 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 it has, the destruction of our country. There should be no one, I don't care what's going on, um, wanting to do that. So thank you again. I love you so much. And like I say, I believe you're divinely directed to me. There's no coincidences. And I just say, go through some of my other videos and see what I got on my page. It may be something else you like, give you a laugh, give you encouragement. So I just thank you so much, all right? Until next time.